Hello and good evening. I'm back again with another tutorial on how to use various tools to modify your server. And today's tool that we'll be looking at is uh, Stone Harry's Spell Editor. So Stone Harry's is unique because it makes the process for creating new spells super simple. Um, you can use it for most cores except for C Mangos. I'm not sure about VMangos, but it does work for Trinity Core and Azeroth Core at the very least. It has a lot of nice features in the sense that you can import and export things as SQL, which makes backing up your database super easy when there's a world database update for your particular core. You can also import other database items such as items so that you can easily add new rows to uh, patch in your items so that they don't show up with a question mark in your game. So anyway, I'm going to leave a link in the description. Basically, the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is download the release version. Um, don't don't download from here. You can probably clone this if you want to, but I'm not going to go over that. Just click on the, the release build. And then you're just going to click this WoW spell editor version 2 or whatever version you happen to be currently on. It's gonna download. And once that's done downloading, you're just gonna extract the program to wherever you want. All right, and once we have the program downloaded and installed, we're just gonna go ahead and open up the folder and run it for the first time. You can choose whichever one suits your particular computer. For me, I'm just going to go with x64. Now you have two options that you're going to be presented with when you first log in for the first time. Um, SQL Lite and MySQL. If you want to be able to import your DBC, I highly suggest just going with MySQL. There's not really many advantages to using SQL Lite in my eyes, though. And then it's going to ask for your MySQL host. So to get that information, hopefully you already have Heidi SQL downloaded. But basically, you're just going to input all this information here. It's going to ask for your username. And then it's going to ask for your password. And then finally, it's going to ask for your port number. After all that's done, it's going to ask you to create a new database. So you can name this whatever you want. I already have a spell database, but I'm just gonna go ahead and name this spell too. All right, now that you have that done, you'll be able to see in your Heidi SQL that you do have your DBC uploaded into SQL. So this makes things infinitely more easy to edit and export. Before you do anything else, you should probably go up into your config and you want to change the directory so that spell editor knows where to pull information from. So the first thing it asks for is the bindings directory. And this is actually located in the folder that you downloaded. So the bindings for this particular version, because it's gonna be 3.3.5a, is going to be 335A, well, okay. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to look for your server's database. And for me, I made a copy just for this particular video. So I'm going to go ahead and search for my database. Basically, your database looks like cameras, DBC maps, M maps, and V maps, and that's basically your database. Just make sure that you have DBC selected and press OK. After that, you can hit Save Changes. And then I would exit out completely. 
enter again. Go with MySQL. And then the next step is going to be importing the files that you want. I highly suggest importing the files that you're actually going to use. So item DBC is a good one. And then all the relevant spell DBCs are automatically ticked for you. If you want, you can also include talents and talent tabs and whatnot. Then we're going to go ahead and import the check DBC files. And this is going to populate your SQL files in Heidi SQL. The nice thing about this too is that if you want to share your custom content with people, this makes importing and exporting things infinitely easier. All right, and if you are successful, you'll notice on the left hand side that your spells will be populated. And then you can go ahead and basically start working. I'm going to create a sample spell for you guys just so you know what to basically expect. So one of the things that I hate about the early stages of World of Warcraft is the fact that you can't actually track two resources at the same time. I always wanted to be able to track both minerals and herbs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and look for one of those spells so that I can make a copy of it. I'm going to go ahead and filter by name. And the spell I'm looking for is Find Herbs. You can also look up the spell ID in any sort of WoW database. I'm going to look and see what the spell is all about. You can actually read each individual column to see what everything does. Some things might seem like Greek to you at first, but that's okay. Once you get used to the layout and where everything is found, it'll be much easier to work with the program. So I'm going to go over into Effects. I'm not really going to change anything in this particular spell. What I'm actually looking for is how the spell works. So basically to track herbs, the finding herb spell applies an aura to your character and the aura name is spell tracking for resources. The miscellaneous value is two because that's herbs and you can go ahead and look at fine minerals as well. So it looks like Fine Minerals is basically the same spell, except its misc value is 3. So we're going to copy one of these two spells and use it as a template. So in order to create a new spell, you just hit the New Spell tab. It's going to ask you to copy an existing record. If you say no, it will give you an error and say that this function doesn't actually work. So I would just go ahead and say yes to copy an existing record. And we're basically going to use the spell ID number for fine minerals. And then it's going to ask us for a new spell ID. And I highly suggest that you use a spell ID that is not in use and something that you can easily remember. I would say maybe keep spells in the 200,000 range that are custom or 100,000 range. It doesn't really matter as long as the range that you're working with is something that you can easily remember and something that you can export later on and import when there's a database change. So click OK. Once that's done, it's going to create a new spell for you. It's basically just the copy of the fine minerals. And I'm going to go into the effects tab. And basically, each spell has three different effects that it could potentially have. It can actually have more than three effects if you use trigger spells. But for the sake of this video, three effects is pretty much your limit. So I'm going to go ahead and copy spell effect one. And you can read each line if you want to learn more about what everything does. If I wanted to make this spell something that I could cast on my party, I could do so. But 
I don't really want to do that this time. So we're going to go ahead and keep it to myself. And the miss value for herbs is two, as we said earlier. And that's pretty much it. Make sure to hit the save spell changes at the top right hand side. After that, if you want to put in a new icon, you can. I'm not going to go into flags today because that gets a little bit complicated. Same thing with visuals. But this is basically the place where we get to pick an icon. I'm just going to go ahead and pick an icon for the time being, and later on I can change that if I want to. After you've chosen your icon, hit the confirm button. And basically this gives you two options to display the icon. The first one is the spell icon ID, what it looks like in your actual spell book. The second one is what it looks like when you have it as a buff. So I'm going to hit yes, and I'm also going to hit no, because the yes no function doesn't really work that way for that particular thing. And then we're going to hit save spell changes. We're going to go back out and we'll see that it's updated. Great, so now that that's done, we're going to go up here to the import export tab. And we're going to export everything that we just worked on. I'm also going to include the item DBC just because it's a good idea to do so out of habit, especially if you're making custom items. The patch name doesn't matter too much, but I'm going to use patch name Z. And then if you want to export the checked files as both DBC and MPQ, you can just use the export as MPQ. And it's going to go ahead and export those for you. Once that's done, we're going to go back into our spell editor folder and go to the export folder. We're going to copy everything here except for the patch ZMPQ, and we're going to put it in our database for our server. Just go ahead and overwrite any existing files. After that's done, we're going to go back into the spell editor folder. And we're going to export the patch MPQ. And we're going to paste it into our WoW data folder so that our client can actually pick that up. After we pasted that in, we're going to go over here and delete the cache. And that's basically it. After that, you should be able to log in and check to see if the spell works. One other thing that I forgot to mention is that you can actually change the spell name and spell description as well. So make sure you do that, otherwise you might get a little bit confused, and hit save spell changes. Alright, so we're back in game, and we have everything loaded up, and we're going to go ahead and test the spell out. In order to learn the spell, you'll have to use a GM command, so make sure that you keep your spell ID handy so that you can learn said spell. All right, I'm going to go ahead and activate the spell, which is in my spell book. And it looks like, if you look at my mini-map, I can indeed track both Bruiseweed, Briarthorn, and Copper Veins, so we are successful. That's pretty much it for WoW Spell Editor. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like if you liked this video, and subscribe if you want to see more.